and also to be able to give you some real clarity and some real insight as far as who we are, not just what we say we are, who we are as a school, uh, and give you that sense of desire to come and see for yourself. So don't just believe my words this afternoon. Please do investigate further and come and see for yourself. Now, I am attempting to share my screen, but I am currently... There we go. Wonderful. I'm now able to share my screen. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Yeah. So YMCA Christian Academy. Everyone can see? Yes. Perfect. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So YMCA Christian Academy, I have had the distinct pleasure of being principal at the school for the last two years. And as you can see on the slide there, we uh, are known as and recognize ourselves as a unique community oriented private Christian primary school. Quite a mouthful. But uh, let me introduce, before we get any further into the school, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, who I am. Here we go. So uh, as per my introduction, you did hear that I am truly blessed with a, a, a large family, you might say, uh, blessed with five children. You can see us all there um, happily uh, in a holiday last summer in California, uh, my wife, uh, my rock, my, my wife Lauren next to me in the middle there, uh, she's also a primary school teacher. Uh, my son Max, who's now 20. Uh, on the right, right hand side, you'll see Olivia, my daughter, who's uh, 16, the, the only, only daughter. So she's a, a, a very special one. <laughs> and the three young gentlemen in the front, you'll see Ari, who's uh, just about to turn six. So he started year one this year. Uh, on the right-hand side, you'll see Finn. He's just turned three. And young Bo in the middle, who was uh, our latest surprise, who is now two years old. So needless to say, the Blake household is a very, very busy one, a very joyful one as well. So I bring a great deal of um, insight in terms of fatherhood into the educational context. And that I think is a very, very important thing. Now onto my work family. I would not be able to do the job I do without these two wonderful people. These are in our senior leadership team. I am accompanied by the uh, amazing Mrs. Claire Campbell-John from the UK. And her role is curriculum and development and Ronald Velasa on the right hand side and his role is supporting in terms of pastoral care and also in leading our learning diversity unit. So we are absolutely privileged to work together. Uh, it is a joy coming to school every day and we uh, as a team are able to do some fantastic things together. So a little bit more about YCA. We have a, a, a history that spans uh, over 10 years now. So opening in 2012, uh, we were the first school to be accredited with the International Primary School, uh, sorry, International Primary Curriculum in 2016. We are very proud to be a dedicated primary school. In Hong Kong, we believe uh, in, the, in the importance of the development in the primary school years and the schools that can focus their time, energy and resources on those primary years and the, and the priorities of the primary years education. It's a very, very uh, special thing. So also in 2019, we received accreditation from the Council of International Schools. This is a, uh, a process that is not one off. We are just undertaking our re-accreditation process at the moment, which in involves a deep dive into all aspects of the school's operation so that we are assured that our school is being evaluated from an, an impartial third party. We are being uh, challenged, questioned to ensure that our standards are the absolute, absolute highest they can be. So we're very, very proud of our CIS record and that ongoing process of improvement. Uh, in our school, the, these two next points are the two points that I hope you go away with this afternoon, remembering and knowing about YCA. Number one, everything that we do, all the decisions that we make as a school, the children are in the center. 
And as a school that focuses solely on the needs of our students, we are also very much a people first, community first school. So our staff, our families and our community are united in that ambition of putting the needs of the students first so that they get absolutely everything that they deserve. Now, our motto is next. You can see the motto, we empower students to ignite bright futures of abundance and fulfillment. Now, that's not a regular school motto. And we're very, very proud of this motto because it really has some elements that identify who we are. And I'll just, I'll explain this to you. The first bit is with regards to empowerment. Our job as educators is not to fill students up with knowledge, skills and understandings and hope that they will go there, go forward and use them uh, wisely. Our job is to empower students, to help them to understand themselves as an agent of their own development, of their own education, being able to be in the driver's seat in their own growth and development. And in the process of their learning at YCA, we want students to understand their own bright future. Now, brightness, we do not have a one size fits all approach. We respect that every single student arrives with their own brightness. And it's our job and our privilege as educators to support students as they identify and unlock their own brightness. Of course, we support them in a breadth of strengths, making sure that the core curricula and the wider curricula are well supported for every student, but we also give every student the right to identify and be supported in developing their own brightness, their own passions for the future. And in terms of the uh, end result, we want students to really understand a deep felt understanding of abundance. That is, through living and working and uh, being part of our community, we want students to really experience an abundance of joy, of hope, of love, that they really experience through the day-to-day -day interaction with their community. Also, we want them to have a, an abundance of choice, an abundance of opportunity that result from living within a community, an international community such as ours. And then fulfillment. We don't tout the same uh, definition of success as many other schools do, but we want students to find their own success through fulfillment. And the idea of fulfillment is very easy for us as adults to think about. I know if I am being a good father, I'm being a good husband, I'm succeeding in my job and I'm being a good boss uh, and I'm getting lots of exercise and eating well and getting plenty of, I feel balanced. We all know as adults what it is to feel balanced. And when, as we've experienced recently in COVID times, when we have something that shifts our balance and maybe comes along and is unexpected, then as agents of our own destiny, we have to be able to adjust our lives. We have to be able to adjust our actions to find that balance again. And for every student at YCA, we teach them explicitly what it is to understand the, the known sense of fulfillment, to know how to establish that, and also to know how to re-establish that if they lose it, and also to ask for help if they need it. So these are really, really important fundamentals about uh, encouraging every student to have a deep psychological understanding of themselves and their community so that they can grow and learn and thrive. I mentioned agency before, and a key, this is a real key element of our school. I'll explain it to you now. So an agent at YCA is a student that is taking charge of their own learning and development. They see themselves as an active uh, contributor to their own development. They contribute to their own community. They make informed decisions and they actively reflect on their actions and their progress. And you can see we've created an acronym here so that students can access what it means to be an agent at YCA. So you can see A, we want our students to be aware, both self-aware, socially aware, and also informed about relevant global and local events. We want our students to be green, valuing our finite earth 
and championing environmental causes. Environment, sorry, entrepreneurial. We want our students to be able to understand what it is to turn an idea into a plan and execute that plan to solve a problem. Innovative, you can see we've been a bit of a cheat with the N there, but slightly innovative. We want students that are able to think outside the box to apply creativity and solve problems and challenges through that vehicle. We want students to understand the value of community. We want them to put community needs first and understand that that is a, a really, really wonderful, wonderful contribution. And last but not least, we have youthful. This is my personal favorite. As we see every morning at the school, at the school doors, wide-eyed, energetic, uh, full of optimism, students that are really willing to come in and to do their best, to learn, to take risks, to make mistakes. And that is truly something special. So this is the agent of YCA. And if your child is to come to YCA, these are the types of skills and mindsets that we'll be encouraging in every, every student. So some key elements that differentiate our community. We do have, a, as an international school, we have a diverse student body with over 20 nationalities. Our class sizes, we are very proud to keep them, uh, continually keep them small. At, at our current class size of around mid-teens, around the 15 mark, this is a wonderful environment so that every teacher is able to devote a strong amount of focus and attention uh, individually per student to support uh, their building strong relationships, but also supporting their individual learning needs. We have a really wonderful Chinese curriculum as well. Uh, we have uh, three different differentiated pathways that ensure that students are able to learn at their uh, level. And it's a really, uh, really well-developed program that develops a love of language learning for our students. We also are very proud of our uh, acceptance rates into renowned secondary schools around Hong Kong. We work really hard to develop partnerships with our secondary schools and our students, 100% uh, of our students move on to renowned secondary international schools and uh, international uh, other international schools around the world as well. We're very thrilled now that COVID restrictions have decreased and we're able to open up the full range of extracurricular and after school activities for our students and have a, a really broad range of offerings and the children just love getting involved in, in clubs uh, and sports. We have basketball, handball, we've got a soccer team starting up. All of these things are a uh, are real, part of our lifeblood at YCA. And last but not least, and coming with uh, being a school that is community-minded, but also authentically Christian, we are a genuine loving community. We care for each other. We, uh, we give time to each other. And that is such a, a really special thing that is modeled every day by all members of our community. We have a strong focus on inclusion within our school as well. We believe every student arrives as an individual learner, so we do not treat them all as uh, one, uh, one identity. We treat them all very individually. So uh, we also have a strong support provision for students that arrive with English as an additional language. We have a really close collaboration with the classroom teacher to design and support uh, with a learning plan for each child so that they have a structured approach uh, in immersing, uh, immersion into English, but also uh, really clear learning goals and ongoing assessment to ensure that they are learning at the right pace. And the key here, so that every student has access to the curriculum, that is their right, and that is what we work hard to achieve with every student. As well as uh, English as an addi additional language, we also have support for uh, SEN or learning support where students may have specific learning barriers and we support those students based on a coaching model, a competency based intervention and really strengths based uh, teaching approach as well to ensure that every student is supported at their point of need 
and, and, and we have a very uh, holistic approach as well. So it's not just on their learning barrier, but it's also about their, uh, the way in which they're thinking. You can see the mindset approach we use, which is quite, um, is very effective for our students as well. Our parents are very much our partners in, at YCA. We communicate regularly with our parents and we just, obviously with COVID restrictions decreasing, we love having parents back on site at school. We've just had our, our Christmas fair and Christmas concert, followed by our Chinese New Year uh, flower fair and concert. And we are looking forward now to our Easter fair coming up very soon. We are a, a, a community that thrives on getting together, sharing together and, uh, and really celebrating. So that's a huge part of who we are. We have a weekly newsletter uh, coming out every Friday. And another wonderful thing is at the end of every uh, unit of learning, there is what's called an exit point. So we invite the community in to celebrate the students' achievements, what they've been able to learn, uh, so that they can demonstrate their learning to the parents and grandparents. And it's a wonderful time of celebration. We encourage our parents to be involved. We have a very uh, busy and thriving PTA, uh, organising a range of events, fundraising and so forth. Uh, and they work very seamlessly with the leadership of the school to make sure that everything is, is run very, very smoothly. We also have uh, many parent information sessions. This week, we've just had a digital citizenship week and internet safety week. And we just had a parent webinar this morning to support parents in understanding how to, uh, to keep their children safe on the internet at home. And as you can see there, we are open door policy. We invite parents to come in. We are open to meetings at any time. And we, we really do invite uh, a great deal of participation from our parents. As a dedicated primary school, we take transitions very, very seriously. The first lot of transitions uh, into our school are our beginners. So our year ones or year two students coming into the school. We have at least five or six occasions for each and every student to engage on the school grounds in their classroom, in the community, mixing with their teachers, learning assistants and their fellow students with the aim of that building confidence so that when they arrive on day one in August, they are ready. They know what to expect and they feel super confident. You can see some of the events that we have are experience days where they come and experience a specialist lesson, come and join in with their class. That we have a teddy bears picnic, with an information session for parents. And as it says there, we want every learner to start on day one, very confident and very ready to learn. As well, we really work hard in both year five and year six to support our students and our families in preparing for entrance to secondary school. I know many parents worry, how do we get our child into the right secondary school? Well, let me tell you, we invest in making sure that we hold your hand and work with you every step of the way. We call it a premium transition. It's not a premium transition just by name, but it is a full consultation. It involves us working with year five families and students in helping them to understand the range of secondary school options available. We work very closely with parents on establishing a first, second and third choice then we provide a lot of information, including linkages to school visits, to uh, open days and so forth. And we make sure that everyone feels really well informed. Then on the student side, we prepare students with secondary school admission interview practice. You can see us uh, in the pictures there, uh, giving, giving some students some practice in those in the types of questions that they would uh, be involved in. And just uh, yesterday, we had five secondary schools come to visit our school. We want our parents and our students to be able to ask all the questions that they want so that they can feel very informed uh, and feel taken care of in the process of finding the right secondary school. As I said, our record speaks for itself. 100% of our students are successfully 
uh, admit it into high quality, well reputed uh, international secondary schools. And that really does speak for itself. Our IPC curriculum is something that is very central uh, to our learning at YCA. We want students to learn in a way that is vibrant, dynamic and experiential. We want students to, to learn through inquiry, through asking questions that mean something to them, <laughs> not by just reading and investigating and researching. We want them to, uh, to direct a lot of their learning based on their interests and based on where, where they want to go. You'll see here that we have themes uh, for, for each different learning un unit. And they start with what's called an entry point. And an entry point allows students to uh, inform the teacher about what they know about, about that particular learning area. And then along the learning journey, you can see the, the cycle there, entry point, knowledge harvest, uh, explaining the theme, and then they go through a, a, a period of researching, recording and reflecting. And then after they have been able to develop their understandings, both conceptual, uh, knowledge, skills and understandings, then they are able to bring that all together and apply it through what uh, they might have as like a summative assessment or an exit point where they get to demonstrate their learning. So it's a really wonderful way to learn. And the, the bottom line is the children absolutely love it. They're engaged on a daily basis and they absolutely love their learning. Our Chinese curriculum, as I mentioned before, we have three ability level pathways. We are, we are a school that uh, teaches Mandarin with traditional characters and we follow the IB scope and sequence. So there is a really seamless transition between our school and other uh, IB and other international schools as well. And you can see there, the idea is to promote a love of language and enable students to progress towards fluency, but not uh, through overwrote learning or in, in a method that is uh, incongruent with our philosophy. But as you can see there, when the children are learning, they are happy. We also engage in a number of different events, such as the Chinese uh, reading battle and the International Chinese Language Festival as well. Our core subject areas, uh, we focus on, uh, for English, we use the UK National Lit Literacy Framework, emphasising a real uh, de developmental continuum of reading, writing, listening, <clears throat> pardon me, speaking, viewing and, present and presenting. And for the maths curriculum, we're covering all mathematical skills involving skill and knowledge building so that students don't just become uh, confident solvers of equations, but they know how to apply mathematics in daily life. Our sub, uh, specialist subjects are really key to what we do at the school as well. The children absolutely love joining in on PE. We have a fully uh, equipped science lab that we've turned into an innovation hub this year, which involves science, makerspace and innovation, uh, so the children absolutely love visit, visiting the Innovation Lab. We also have a specialist art teacher doing some amazing artistic projects, as well as music. So this is a really wonderful uh, specialist provision that we're very proud of. Now, for a school that has a, a real focus on a broad, balanced curriculum, without uh, touting being extremely academically focused, we have outstanding results. What we you can see in front of you now is for our year four, five, six, and seven students. And this was last year. And if you remember, there was a lot of disruption uh, still with COVID, with school open, uh, uh, opening and closing. Even in those circumstances, our teachers were able to deliver the curriculum, our students were able to perform. And you can see our graph is exceeding, is, a, is outperforming like schools in reading, narrative, writing, expository writing, and mathematical literacy. We're extremely proud of these results and know that it speaks very highly 
of our focus on well-being, on pastoral care, alongside rigorous academia, is is a really uh, strong balance. Now, you've heard enough from me. I think that the uh, the most important thing, as I said before, is coming to see our school, coming to see what the YCA difference is for yourself. Uh, our admissions team, we are really blessed with Christine and Jesse. If you do uh, contact us through the following, uh, uh, I think we've got some links to our contacts on the next slide, but we are always interested to have a conversation and to invite you for a school tour. We are accepting applications all year round. And for those interested in the coming academic year, uh, uh, you can reach out and apply online through the website yca.edu.hk and also there has been some uh, ongoing current interest in this academic year you can also reach out to our uh, admissions team as well there are some qr codes to support your access if you'd like to uh, grab your phone and click away but also you'll find a lot of insight into our daily day-to-day uh, -day life at yca through our Facebook and our Instagram page. Um, but we're always there to, uh, to help if you'd like to reach out via WhatsApp uh, to book a school tour. We are more than happy to, to support with your questions or your interest. Now, I think that is uh, it from me. I hope I kept somewhere near to the time requirement, but uh, thank you so much for your time and attention this afternoon. We do uh, hope to be able to hear from you soon. Thank you very much, uh, Principal Blake. That was an excellent presentation. Definitely learn a lot about the school. Um, I'm actually very impressed with the uh, definitely the small class size, which is great mid-teens, and then also the amazing ISS result, ISA results that the school has achieved. Congratulations on that. So moving on from here, we will move into our Q&A session. Um, I will start with the questions in English. And if, uh, you know, Mr. Blake, if you can give me the answer in English, and then I will invite Vivian to then translate into Mandarin for the benefit of our parents. So going on to our first question, um, you mentioned agency. Uh, it's the beating heart and key ingredient to bright futures, according uh, to your presentation earlier. It's, it's very subjective. How would you describe it? Like how it is actually weaved into the school curriculum? How is that built around that? And why is it so important for the children? Yeah, thank you, Jennifer. Agency as a concept, um, it's, it's very important for us at the beginning to ensure that our, our teaching staff understand explicitly what, what is meant. We uh, want every teacher to be able to know that they are the primary, the first model of agency, that every student is watching them to understand what, 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 it, what does this mean? What am I supposed to do? But essentially it's quite simple. Agency is the ability to make uh, informed choices based on your own understandings and your own capacities to make decisions, to influence events that have an impact on yourself and of those in your community or your family. It's really, really quite simple. But the uh, embodiment of agency is more important. Helping students to understand how they can enact agency in their daily life is very, very important. So more than understanding it's important, we also want to give them and instill that it's a responsibility of theirs as part of our community to act in an agentic way. We offer students ways of exercising their agency by asking them to influence and helping to, for them to co-construct learning engagement, giving them voice and choice and empowering them with ownership of the learning that they co-construct with their teacher. We also enact agency through our approach to learning diversity. We want every student to be able to have like I said, that universal access to the curriculum. And that's something that we work really hard uh, for each student to achieve. Uh, agency is also accessed through students having really clear and explicit learning objectives so that they know exactly what it is that they're aiming for and what uh, a clear picture of what success and personal growth looks like as well. 
We also don't say to every student, oh, you must show your learning in this way and this way only. We give students a range of op options and agency in demonstrating their learning in a number of different ways as well. So we also ensure that a lot of our learning engagements, a majority are very experiential and very differentiated to ensure that they are able to be personally relevant, engaging, and the student is able to invest heavily in the learning as well. Um, we also think that part of being an agent is, is a student's ability to actively reflect during their learning and think about progress and plan their next steps. That's a key part of being a, a really well-informed agent as well. Another, um, another important part is having students engage in project-based and collaborative learning. And this ensures that they are developing those personal executive functioning skills, knowing how to stay organized and stay on track within a project, as well as how to collaborate well with others. Things don't go always to plan. We need to communicate. We need to solve problems all the way through. So a lot of those soft skills, those universal uh, soft skills that we know are required for students as they face the future of secondary school, university and the workplace that they will need to, to develop. Great, thank you. Sounds to me like, so we, we are here to build a community or build the next generation to be independent thinkers and they can then lead by examples to the others. Uh, so I'd like to invite Vivian to do a translation, please, in Mandarin. Thank you. Uh,刚刚我们进行了第一个提问,然后我来重复一下,那刚刚的提问就是在YMCA,在他刚刚的一个分享当中,我们提到一个词叫agency,那他说的是我们一个非常重要的一个关键是对于一个孩子有一个
Um, I do know you mentioned a little bit about SCN learning support as well. Maybe you can mention a little bit about that as well. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Jennifer. We, uh, in terms of the number of parents I sit down with and talk to uh, who are look currently in local school and are, are looking to attend our school, they universally speak about being drowned in homework, having this, the student feel very overwhelmed and, and they've really lost their joy uh, in terms of for, or motivation for learning. And that's a, for, for me as a principal, that's a really, um, a really sad uh, situation to be in. What we are aiming to do at YCA is to create a learning environment that is designed very intentionally to provide a safe place to learn to alleviate any unnecessary stress for the student or, or burden for the student. We want their well-being to come first and for their holistic development to, to follow. Coupled with this, we also maintain very high expectations for each student in terms of their engagement, in terms of their effort, and in terms of their growth. So it is not uh, at a sacrifice that we prioritize these things. We remove, we remove the pressure and the stress by acknowledging all growth that the student makes and celebrating their achievement while striving to achieve their fullest potential. So in our approach, it's expected that every student should learn differently. So if a student is struggling, that we consider a range of different interventions. Like I said, not one size fits all. We always favor in-class support rather than pull out excluding the child from the learning environment to ensure that they feel part of the class and not excluded, as I said. Our inclusion philosophy treats each student as an individual, respecting where they're at, developing and learning, ensuring that they are able to access the curriculum and can grow and can thrive. But in terms of if they need that extra bit of support, we have some, some of the strategies are, we have a dedicated EAL teacher, that provides individual assessments for the students to really focus in on what are the areas that they need support in. Then they work with the teacher on co-planning and supporting to ensure that it's not just when there is intervention by the specialist, but throughout their learning, throughout the regular curriculum, uh, they're being supported. We have booster classes, both before school and after school, to ensure that students, if there is an area that needs some support, not in an overwhelming, like an hour long, but just bite size where the students are able to reinforce and brush up on core skills so that they can feel really, really confident uh, coming to school each day. As well, in the classroom, we offer bilingual support teachers. So for students coming with their native, native tongue, they are able to access that boosted bilingual support and that have at a point of need and understanding so that they are accessing their curriculum and keeping up with the learning in class as well. They're just a few of the ways in which each, uh, in, in which we treat each student as an individual and ensure that we're being very targeted to support them at their point of need. Great, that's, that's very, very good to hear. Mental health is very, very important <laughs> in a highly strong society. Um, also, just very quickly, I guess separately, please share, as a share with us a day in the school, um, just a quick summary of our primary student. Sure, sure. So each day, um, again, being uh, in, in terms of a community oriented, each classroom starts like a little family. They start with a, a devotion where the teacher is able to reflect with the student on uh, what's going on. There is usually a, a Bible story, some singing. Uh, there will be a group prayer. If a student is able to um, share something they're worried about or a prayer request, we all uh, are able to join in and pray together uh, so that they have a strong sense of, uh, of community support. Uh, afterwards, they'll start their core curricular classes. They'll have daily English, maths, Chinese, and IPC, the broader curriculum, so the history, science, geography, etc. Um, and after their first class, they have a 30 minute recess and snack break where they get to play and enjoy the rooftop and the playground and have a great um, a balanced start to their morning. Usually after their break, they'll resume learning until lunch and uh, lunch recess. 
And the afternoon sessions usually consist of a mix of specialist classes. So they might do art or PE or music, uh, or they may be going to the innovation lab to do one of the STEM classes as well. Uh, every Friday, we have a whole school assembly. We just had a, an assembly this morning. Uh, and this morning we invited a, a member of the community. We've just done a fundraising drive for refugees in Hong Kong and we were able to fundraise and we were able to have a lot of donations. So the students were able to join in and celebrate that uh, the ability to help people in need. Great, thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to invite Vivian to translate please question and answer in Mandarin, thank you. Okay, thank you, Jennifer and Mr. Jeff. Uh, Mister.Jeff.Blake的回答是这样的。呃，首先的话呢，我们。学校会收到比如说来自当地学生的一些家长可能是投诉吧那么因为这些压力和负担是不利于每个学生的幸福一些策略针对这些学生从本地学校转到我们学校当中那第二个的话呢是在上课之前和上或者是放学之后呢会有一个加强的课程那么这些课程呢可以就是针对性每一个孩子他有特殊的那个需要的话呢让他们在这方面呢可以保持到一个能够跟上我们的进度那第三个的
Sure. Thank you so much, Jennifer. It's really, really important to, to recognize that international primary curriculum um, is, is a really well accepted and well renowned curriculum used in over 1800 international schools uh, and in and national schools in over 90 countries globally. So it as a curriculum and its uh, scope and its uh, in terms of what it prepares students for, it prepares students well for transition into other international schools, including the IMYC, which is the extension of the IPC into middle years, UK curriculum, uh, the MYP or the IB's continuation, uh, so on, and onto IB diploma. So what I'm what I'm saying here is the IPC curriculum for the inquiry-based methodology and the soft skills that students learn. It prepares them well for a universal access to a range of other curricula. It is not a narrow channel that we uh, invite students to. And as a result, we, our students graduate and go on to a range of different schools with offering a range of different curricula very, very successfully. So as I mentioned before, the premium transition, we are guiding students and, and parents and supporting them in the process of evaluating, choosing, applying and transitioning to the right school and the school of their choice. We work with year five students and families all the way through to year six. And the majority of our graduating students, I'll tell you the main schools that our, uh, our students graduate to. Uh, predominantly, they move on to ESF schools, the English Schools Foundation, uh, mainly uh, West Island School, Island School and South Island School in terms of uh, depending on geographical preference. We have a number of our uh, students moving on to French International School. We also have a number of our students who enter uh, Carmel School, so El Elsa High School as well. Uh, as well, we have students that attend uh, Canadian International, Hong Kong International, uh, and also CAIS, Christian Alliance International School, and ICS, International Christian School. So, and as for our plans for uh, developing a secondary school, we are truly blessed to have the CYMCA as our sponsoring body. They are infinitely supportive of our school and its growth. Uh, as for the current market in, in the educational market in Hong Kong, um, it is not a, a primary priority, but we are considering uh, options for the future as uh, Hong Kong um, moves moves beyond this uh, this COVID period and and continues to thrive. But I would put that in our medium term planning rather than in our short term planning. But we really do, as a again focused on the needs of our community, we will continue to reevaluate year by year. Uh, but in the meantime, it is our focus to, to ensure that every student is successfully placed and transitioned into the secondary school of their choice. That is our, that is our commitment. Great, thank you. That's a good, quite a very, very like an impressive list of schools that the students graduate and move on to, amazing. Um, so very quickly, I will have Vin Vin please uh, do the translation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jennifer and Mr. Jeff Blake. Uh, 我们刚刚进行了第三个提问, 题目是, 那么我了解到YMCA呢,是为5到11岁的学生提供英语授课的国际小学课程, IPC, 那你能否分享一些从YCA过渡到毕业的学校的一些孩子, 那么YCA未来有没有中学的一个计划呢? 我们的回答是这样的, IPC课程呢,被全球组织各国家, 一千八百多所国际学校和国立学校使用，所以呢，IPC的课程是非常非常重要的。它能够让我们的学生为过渡到其他国际学校的环境做好准备，啊，为顺利提进入呢，会提供这个IMYP英国的课程，啊，MYP
过渡到他们所选择的学校的过程当中得到支持和这个指导的。那么我们开始咨询五年级，比如说啊，开始咨询五年级的学生和家庭，提供个性化的信息、建议以及啊面试的一些准备等等。那么呃、啊，从 YMCA 毕业的一些学生呢，我们可以列举一下一些啊进入的一些国际学校。那首先呢，就是我们的英基，包括有港岛学校。西岛学校以及南岛学校，还有一部分的学生进入法国国际学校，另外呢还有进入到卡梅尔学校，还有加拿大国际学校、香港国际学校以及基基督教国际学校等等。那么最后的话呢，呃，至于呃未来的一个中学计划，那么基于香港教育市场的情况呢，我们目前没有任何的计划，那么可能在中期会考虑未来中学的一个选择。但重点的是呢，我们现在将资源投入到尽可能成为最好的专用小学，拥有出色的中学过渡计划，让我们的家庭和每一个孩子都充满信心啊，然后一路上可以支持到他们做好的这个衔接和过啊和这个过渡。好，那么以上呢就是我们啊第一间学校我们的 Q&A 的这个环节到这里也结束了。好啊 ，Jennifer。Thank you so much, Mr. Blake. Thank you for the great presentation today. Love the community feel of the school and love your secondary school placements. Uh, once again, have a great weekend. And uh, for anyone who have any questions, please do email us. Uh, we can actually we will put up the uh, webinar YouTube and also we can reply to questions as well. Now, moving on to our second presenter, uh, we will okay. have Dr. Cora Hui of Christian Alliance PC Lao Memorial. Thank you, Mr. Blake. And uh, Vivian, you. maybe you can. Thank you. And Vivian, yeah. maybe you can start with the introduction first. Thank you. Okay. 好，非常开心。那么接下来我们进呃第二间学校啊，是宣道会刘平斋纪念国际学校。呃，它是香港香港九龙塘基督教中华宣道会创办的第一所国际学校。那么今年呢，迈向了三十周年。那么学校多年来推动道德、商数、教育，那么啊，培育学生在建立良好个人平。个人的品格。那么近年，近年学校更加是翻新了校园和采用加拿大阿伯达双语学制，让学生在多元的学习环境下学习丰富的知识，对海外升学的衔接呢，比本地的传统学校更加的灵活的。那么我们接下来主讲的嘉宾呢，就是许干。许陈干华博士，那么许博士呢是宣道会刘平斋纪念国际学校的校长。刘平斋呢是一所位于香港的国际小学。许博士呢从事教育工作超过二十五年，他的研究重点是学生的健康以及领导。那么自一二零一六年呢，他发表了多篇的论文。好，时间交给 Jennifer， 用英文来介绍一下我们的学校和校长。谢谢。Thank you, Vivian. So moving on to our second speaker, we have Dr. Cora Hui, who's the head of school of Christian Alliance PC Lao Memorial International School. Dr. Cora Hui is the head of school of Christian Alliance, a bilingual primary, primary international school in Hong Kong. Dr. Hui has been an educator for over 25 years. Her research focus has been on servant leadership and learners wellness and has published multiple research papers since 2016. I'd like to welcome back Dr. Cora Hui. Please share your slide and start with the presentation. Thank you very much, Dr. Hui. Thank you, Jennifer and Vivian. And I'm going to start sharing my screen. You will stop other sharing and then I will see if I can. Uh, pick up the right screen. Just give me a moment. Thank you for your patience. Yes. Great seeing you again. Love that lovely smile you've got. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. That's great. Okay. Yeah. I think this one will do. Can yes. everybody see what I have? That's yes. great. Yes, actually, uh, this is not my first time working with Whisper. I've been enjoying this time to speak to you parents through this platform. Today, I just want to also invite my um, Chinese team leader, uh, Vivian Ge, Ge Lao Su, to join us as well. Uh, she will speak to us on our bilingual English and Mandarin curriculum. I also have a parent she want to share with you because she was in your position before, uh, wanting to find a school in Hong Kong. And um, she want to share with you a little bit. And her name is Gigi. She will join us after Vivian share a little bit about the curriculum. Curriculum. So I like to start by welcoming you to have this time with us about the CAPCL, our short name for Christian Alliance PC Lao Memorial International School. Mm -hmm. um, as 
Jennifer and Vivian mentioned that our school is founded by the Kowloon Tong Church and it has already got 60 years of experience running different schools in Hong Kong. Altogether, there are 17 schools, but two of the 17 schools are international schools using the Canadian curriculum. So you can see they're there for 60 years and 1992, more than 30 years ago, they have started this school in Kowloon City, but they are not just wanting to run the school year after year without actually investing on renovating the school for better education. So in year 2017, the school closed for renovation and we reopened in 2020. August 2020, we started. We are very happy to serve children from five years old and onward. Last year, we celebrate 30 years, and you can see this picture is taken in our school courtyard where our parents, our students, and our staff are together forming the number 30. This is our school logo, and we believe that our children will be a blessing themselves to the family and everybody around when they are embedded by streams of water, when they have the source of string coming from within, from underneath, and they will bear fruits as they continue in their learning. In our school, we look at holistic learning as embedding into the hard matter. We want children to develop a good motivation for their learning they also cultivate good habits of being active and empathetic listener, believing themselves to be good organizer as they are looking at the work. We want our children to be independent in everything they do and so that they're able to drive their learning on their own. In our school, we use the Canadian program and we think it is rigorous. It is relevant and it helps our children to develop a clear thinking strategies. So cultivate good creative critical thinking method is important for us at school. And we want them to use what they learn to serve others in the school community as well as outside. Actually, this year, our children has multiple opportunity to go outside of the school, reaching to their neighborhood and the community and to serve them by providing them with ready cookies, boon cakes, or singing Christmas carol. Because we believe children learn to serve is children knowing that they're capable and they're confident. This is what we want our children to do. They grow in wisdom and stature, in favor with God and man. As that, they become faithful and fruitful disciples. Our mission is that we will see our students in whatever they do, in examples, um, that they will be an example in their speech and in their behavior, in love, faith, and purity. In Hong Kong, as you can hear from YCA or maybe in other webinar from this platform, there are lots of international schools using different curriculums. Yes, whether it's US, UK, Australia, Canada, or other one. But CAPCL, we follow the Canadian curriculum because in the place of Alberta, Canada, it actually have 35 years of doing Chinese English bilingual program. So it is not just long in its history, but there are also many schools in Alberta, Canada are doing Mandarin as a part of their daily learning. And I think this is unique and this is very good for you bringing your children to Hong Kong and studying in an international school. How does it work? I'm going to ask Gola, so my Chinese team lead, to share a little bit with you. Hello, 
。同学在学学校学习的时间有百分之六十五的时间我们是用英文授课，那百分之三十五的时间呢，我们是用中文普通话进行我我们的授课。那同时呢，这个代表我们的教学语言是使用普通话。那我们的书面的一个文本呢，是使用繁体字。那么繁体字的选择呢，也是因应我们在香港的这样子的一个语言环境，能够方便学生应用在他们实际生活的情景里。那么除了中文课以外，学生同时会使用普通话来修读数学以及另外一门的艺术学，呃，一另外一门的副课。那么副课呢，包括艺术、圣经、体育或者是音乐。那我们的主要的核心课程课程有英文、社会研究、科学。那左边这一栏的三个科目是由我们的英文班主任使用英文来进行教授，右边的这个中文以及数学科目呢，是由中文老师使用普通话以及繁体字进行教授。啊，大家可以在右边的这个表格里面看到我们的专业科目。呃，也就是说，我们这个呃复修科目有六有五项：艺术、圣经、健康、音乐以及体育。那么每一年呢，中文老师会负责教授其中的两门科目。啊，在这样子的一个表格里，大家可以看到我们同学的一个呃范例的课程表。您大家可以看到，我们的这个同学呢，他其实每一天都会有固定的一段时间啊，约四十到六十分钟，他会上数学课；另外一段时间呢，也是四十到六十分钟的时间，他会上中文课。那么在下午或者是在啊上午的另外一段时间，他会选修两门复课，一门是艺艺术，或者是一门体育。那么我们的整个学年呢是分成两个学期，所以在第一学期他们会使用中文普通话学习其中的一门选修课，在第二个学期呢，中文老师和英文老师会互相交换，我们会用中文教授另外一门的选修科目。那么下面呢，我也简单的向各位家长介绍一下我们双语教学的益处。其实，呃，在我们的这个实际教学中，我们发现双语的教学可以很好的来发挥我们学生的智力潜能。当他使用两种语言能够灵活的去运用的时候，啊，无论是在他的逻辑思维，在他的语言表达，啊，以及包括包括他对文化以及社交方面的理解。都能够有非常棒棒的、非常好的协助作用。另外一方面呢，也能够在学术成绩上面啊、呃，对学生呃打好良好的基础。特别是在数学这一门科目中啊、呃，当我们去用中文来学习乘法表啊、呃，来认读我们的多位数字啊、呃，比如个十、百、千、万，那我们在教学的时候也会应用凑十法啊、呃，以及退位、进位。这样的一些教学语言，来帮助学生更好的去发展他的逻辑思维。那么在数学方面，他们也能够有更多的这样子的一个知识储备，来帮助他们取得更好的成绩。另外呢，我们在呃第二语言的这个教学中，也会融入一些文化的内容，比如说啊、呃，我们在呃实际的教学课。课文中我们会有一些关于呃香港的一些本地的呃景点。啊，我们怎么样去介绍这个景点啊？啊，包括我们的一些节日以及文化活动的庆祝，包括中秋节、呃，中国新年啊这样子的一些文化的活动的介绍，同时呢，也能更好的帮助学生去理解我们这个香港多元文化的一个语境。好，接下来的话呢，我们想邀请我们呃。一位家长来分享一下他的孩子由第一年呃我们的预备级加入我们学校之后到今天啊、呃，他的孩子在呃我们二年级学习呃他的一个经验分享。嗯，你在吗 ？Hello， 哎，我在。你在可以呢。好的，那我们有请。呃，这一位家长可以打开您的啊，可以好的，你可以就口口头的来跟我们介绍一下就好。啊，大家好，我叫王芳，哎，听得见吗？哈
听得见，听得见啊，对，哎，大家好，我是王芳，我的小朋友呢是。Hello， 哎 ，PCL 就读二年级的学生学校，呃，想当年的时候呢，我们小朋友进入学校之前呢，嗯，因为在固有的之前的一个学校有一些不太愉快的一个经历，那令到小朋友呢，就是变得性格非常的害羞，非常的，呃，内向，不太愿意跟呃陌生人去交流。当有陌生人去到家里的时候呢，他总是要说：“我要藏起来，我要藏起来。”他也不喜欢跟别人去交流，也不喜欢去跟别人去沟通，总是嗯自己藏在一边。那当时呢 ，K Free 进到这个学校的时候呢，呃嗯，老师和校长都非常的呃关心每一个小朋友。我看到这个情况呢。然后我就非常的放心。那之后呢？这个小朋友经过三年的时间呢，他发生了一个很翻天覆地的一个变化。嗯，他从以前一个不太爱上学的小孩子呢，就变成非常喜欢去上学。啊、嗯，总是在问：哎呀，什么时候去上学？什么时候能看到他的呃小朋友，可以和他们一起玩？脸上又多了很多的笑容，非常的开心。呃，放假的时候总是在问：“哎呀，什么时候可以上学啊？”呃，他好像不太期望的放假啊，这样子。后来呢，他是一个从一个很害羞的一个小朋友呢，之后哎，三年的时间，他就哎，上一次在圣诞节的时候呢，他就自己主动的去申请做这个小主持人，而且从来没有跟我们家长沟通过这个问题，他也没有呃沟通过这个环节，他自己去。申请的，那他申请的同时，他要记得哦，他要在很多人全校的人的面前站在那里是呃说话呀、主持啊，啊、呃，还有讲一些圣诞节的一些在这个呃 ，sorry， 在这个圣诞节上的一些 party 的一些稿子，那他非常的有信心，而且他很他。啊，不好意思啊，那个他就很很有信心，从一个完全很害羞的、很内向的一个小朋友，就发生了一个很翻天覆地的一个变化。这就是我看到小朋友的一个转变，对我们家长来讲也非常的 surprise， 就是非常的惊喜。呃，想不到小朋友三年之间发生了这么翻天的覆地的变化。他翻，呃，他现在很。哎，很喜欢笑，而且很多的笑容，哎，人也变得很积极上进，而且很有信心。嗯，我觉得他是找到他自己的内在的力量，他觉得被人家欣赏，然后有人去鼓励，令到他能够茁壮的成长。所以这就是我看到我小朋友在这个 C F A C P L 里边发生的一个转变。所以我觉得我非常的荣幸和庆幸的去选择了这间学校。呃，本身我自己是一个审计师，工作又很忙，嗯、呃，没有时间去照顾小朋友的情绪。但是在学校里边呢，嗯、呃，学校的老师啊，还有哎、呃、校长啊，都能够帮到小朋友，能做到我们家长也做不到的事情。所以我很感谢这个学校。嗯，嗯谢谢大家。嗯，好的，谢谢您的分享。那么其实呢，呃，也不介意跟各位家长分享。其实，呃，这位家长的孩子第一年的时候呢，呃，是我来呃教授他中文课的。那么其实当时呢，呃，这个孩子刚刚来学校的时候，他的第一语言是普通话啊。当时他的英文呢，并不是说有很强的这样子的一个语言背景，所以这也是为什么说可能刚刚进到这样子一个国际学校的环境，对于很多我们呃内地背景或者是呃。中文背景长大的孩子来说，有这样子的一个语言的障碍，或者是一个语言的这个困难点。那么，呃，这位孩子进到学校了以后呢？通过三年的时间啊，那我们很快的用我们的这个双语的课程来帮助孩子的适应。那么他呢，很快的建立自信以后，他也敢大胆的开口，大胆的去用英文来提问，用英文的来沟通。那甚至我们今年的这个圣诞节的表演，我们也邀请了这位同学来作为我们英文、中文双语的一个主持人，来代表我们整个二年级来跟全校的这样一个同学去进行介绍。所以我们也非常感谢这位家长愿意跟我们分享您的经验。Thank you, Vivian. Thank you, Gigi, for helping. I want to carry on because I'm sure that some of you parents would be interested to find out 
if you want to join CAPCL, what do you need to do? So I'm going to go and speak on that. And Vivian, I know you need to go somewhere. So thank you for joining me. Thank you. Great. Hi. Hi. Mm, so, you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Gigi. Ah, before I speak about joining, I know as you asked the other school also, all parents want to know after prep, after grade one, two, three, four, five, six, what is the next step? And that is so important. When you worry about this, all school want to find out for you. This is also a good news I share with my school community. After they finish grade six, graduating students can go to other Christian school because we have collaboration with Christian Alliance International School as well as International Christian School because both schools also have secondary school. Especially for Christian Alliance International School, they are also under the same school sponsoring body, the same church. Actually today, I just shared the great news with the other parents that our students, when they finish in grade six, all of them can have early priority to have the admission interview for this secondary school because two schools have close collaboration. So that is great news. If you want to know more, I encourage you to come to our school for school tour. We have private tours that parents can join and ask for more detail. Now, I mentioned that I want to explain to you if you are interested to come to CAPCL, we use a bilingual English and Chinese program that has a Canadian curriculum as a foundation. If you are interested, you can come to our website and apply online. There is a fee. $1,500, but once you pay the fee and submit the document, all the children will receive interviews. And I just want to show you, you will find it in our website as well. This is the payment for the whole year and it's paid in 10 installments. We also have discount for children that are the second and third child when the first child is also in our school. So when you have a big family, you actually pay less per child. I want to show you the age guide. So if your child is born in year 2018, it is available for our prep class. If this child is born in year 2017, it's grade one and so on. And of course, we also have our admission interview. For some of the children, we will depend on their background and assign them to the most appropriate grade level. So this is my last line before I answer the general question. We want our children to learn and grow in God's love. They serve and flourish in God's grace. And that is why we want to have a school for children to come, that they learn two languages and they use the language in school and outside school to serve the community. So that is the slide that I have prepared. So Jennifer and... Um, and I okay. want to just see if I can just answer some question that you have prepared. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hui. Thank you to Ge Lao Shi. And also thank you to the wonderful parent Gigi who had her sharing and testimonial earlier. Um, great testimonial. I'm very, very impressed. Um, and then also, of course, uh, with uh, CAPCL, um, it feels like a great school as well and also with amazing placements into secondary school. So from here, uh, we will move on to Q&A session. Uh, once again, similar to earlier, we will do the questions and answers in English first, and then I will invite Vivian to do the translation in Mandarin. Mm. So moving on to our first question, Dr. Hui. Um, we do know like in Hong Kong, uh, parents do tend to, tend to put a lot of emphasis on English, math, and Mandarin, mm. uh, also specifically bilingual learning and also science learning. Can you tell us more about your curriculum at CAPCL that covers these subjects? How do they differ from the other schools? That's great. In our school, we want children to play, participate, and find new possibilities. So that is our three Ps, that they play together, they interact. We want them to be actively involved in their learning. And our 
our curriculum is often allow children to have many ways to explore. So it's not often on paper and pencil. So what we want our children to do is that they will have, um, sorry, uh, I just have something coming in, sorry. They will just have um, a lot of ways to share their thoughts and their ideas. We want them to know to solve one problem, there are multiple ways. And for many questions, there are multiple answer to the same question. So it's not a yes and no, but we ask a lot of what, a lot of why, a lot of how question. We like to have our learning to be fun and that is play-based because we know playing, is our children's first language. It is. All children, healthy children, when they are growing up, they love to play. And that's what we think. When we are teaching them in the language that they're most comfortable, they will enjoy. So it's not just book teaching, but enjoy participation, communication, and interaction with others. In our school, we also focus on four Cs, that children learn to communicate with one another, they learn to collaborate with one another, they exercise their critical thinking skills and the creative thinking skills. Therefore, in our school, when you talk about emphasize on math, English, and Mandarin science learning, we have our stream education. We want to focus on science and technology, reading and research, engineering, aesthetics, and mathematic teaching. In our school, we have different space for children to learn, whether it's the maker space, the stream room, and we also have different activity during the school year to promote science and math, English and Chinese learning, like the Earth Day and the stream fair. So those are many good things that we do this year, and I enjoyed having children learning and flourish. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. That was that's very very true. Play definitely play based, and uh, it, you know CAPCL has a very nurturing community and school, which is great because this is what we need for kids to flourish. So I'd like to invite um, Vivian to translate into Mandarin, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jennifer and Xu Bo Shi. Ah, 非常开心。那么刚刚我们进行了第一个提问。啊，题目是在香港作为父母的话呢，我们会倾向于非常重视这个英语、数学和普通话，特别是双语的学习的以及科学的学习。你能够告诉我们更多关于刘平斋涵盖这些科目的一些课程吗？啊，然后呢，与其他的学校有什么不同呢？许博士的回答是这样的啊，首先呢，我们呃非常鼓励孩子是有三个 P， 一个 P 是是 play 啊 ，participate and possibility， 就是我们。啊、uh, ，鼓励孩子去玩乐、去参与，以及发现更多的可能性。那么，我们的教学呢，不单单在纸和笔上啊，不仅仅是课本的一个教学，我们是用通过不同的方式教会孩子去解决多样性的问题。那么，作为孩子的话，肯定有很多 why and what 的问题，就是他们会有很多很多的提问。那我们在这个成长当中的话，我们学校可以给到孩子一个体验式的学习。鼓励学生去参与、去交流以及去互动。那么，另外的话呢，在孩子的成长当中呢，我们也非常希望孩子能够通过我们的四 C 啊，我们有 C C 什么呢 ？Communicating， 呃，就是我们希望孩子呢可以有这个沟通和协作的能力，还有一个批判性思维以及创造性思维。那么，希望孩子在学习当中，他们和其他孩子有更多的合作性。提高他们的这个思考的能力。那最后的话呢，在我们的主流教育当中，在科学、技术、阅读与研究、美学、数学等等的这个教学当中呢，我们呢也是啊、呃、给到孩子的。那另外特别的话呢，我们有学校里面有不同的学习空间给到孩子，包括有一个叫我们叫创客空间吧啊 ，make a play 啊 ，make a space 啊，是吧 ？space， 然后给到孩子。另外的话呢，还有一个。stream， 呃，一个主流学习的一个空间给到孩子。那么，在我们的学校年啊，就是一年当中，我们有特别对于这个中英文学习里面有一个叫地球日，还有一个一个的话呢，是我们的展览或者是集市。所有的这些课程的话呢，是可以让我们的孩子与其他的学，呃，让我们的孩子的课程与其他的学校是不同的。好，那我们进行的是第一个问题，现在交给 Jennifer， 我们进行第二个问题，谢谢
Thank you, Vivian. Uh, Dr. Hoi, moving on to the second question. Um, in, the uh, in the admission process, which you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier on your slides, um, I do understand that CAPCL offers the individual capital note um, and the annual capital levy. So as a parent of a child who is applying, what is the difference between the two? Are we required to purchase either one or is it both if my child is admitted? Will also that be refundable once the child leaves the school? <laughs> any financial aid if you can share with us as well. Thank you. That's very good. Yes, we do have our children covered by either ICN or ACL. So either they pay ICN or ACL. ICN is independent individual capital note, which is more expensive, but you only need to pay one time. And when you leave, after some time, well, let's say your child graduate, it is transferable with only 1% administrative fee. That means actually you pay bigger sum, but at the end you will get it back almost everything, 99% is transfer. If you think that this is not the option you choose, some parents will also select the ACL, that is annual capital levy. This is a small sum, but it needs to be paid every year when the child goes to school. And that small sum of money is not refundable. So once you paid it, the money is with the school and next year you will need to pay again. So depending on the parent's decision in terms of the financial situation, actually in our school, many of the parents, because they have confidence that their school, if the school is good and children have good option, they will pay ICM because that is transferable. Only a few and a few number of parents will choose the ACL option because in the long run, you actually save money by choosing the ICM option. You asked the question about financial aid. Yes, as a Christian school, we also understand there are times that parents may go through some unexpected situation and they will need help. So in our school, there is a financial aid scheme and parents who are interested to find out, they can take in the application form and look at the requirements and contact our finance department to follow up with them. So yes, there is a financial aid for children with needs. Great, thank you so much. Um, just very quickly for the ICN, how much does that cost and how much is the annual levy? The ICN should be 260K and the annual levy is only 26,000. So I have to check right away for you. Roughly around there. Okay, thank you so much. Vivian, I would like to invite you to do the translation, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jennifer and Xu Bo Shi. Now, we have the other question is in the process of the process of the process of the process of the 资本啊，资本票据和年度的资本税。那么，作为正在申请的孩子来的家长来说，这两者有什么区别呢？如果孩子被学校录取的话，那么我们是否需要购买其中的一个，或者是两个都要购买呢？那么，如果学孩子离开学校或者毕业以后，这个费用会不会退还呢？是学校是否提供这个经济的援助或者是奖学金呢？好，许博士的回答是这样的。那首先的话呢，呃，学校里面会提供一个。叫做 ICN 啊 ，ICN 呢，它是会贵一些的。ICN 呢，就是个人资本票据，它是一次性的，它比较贵啊。刚刚说到就是，呃，就是我们这个有二十万，对吧？然后呢，它总数是很大的，但是它是可以转让的。转让的话呢，会收取百分之一的管理费，就是转让的时候你可以拿回百分之九十九。那另外还有一个叫年度资本税，每年是支付一次的，一一次的，就是 ACL 啊。这个的话呢，总数呢会少一些。刚刚说的是二十六 k 哈，这然后呢是每年支付一次的。那每年交了之后呢，你就不能退回了啊，不能退回了。那当然学生，呃呃，校长对于啊，不是对于家长来说，如果他选择了我们学校，他他有这个自信，学校很好，那学生也是很喜欢的话呢，我们是非常鼓励呃，或者是大部分的学家长都会选择这个。啊，一次性交的，一次性交的。那对于长期来说，一次性交呢，肯定是更划算的。那另外的话呢，呃，最后我们提到一个是有没有这个经济的资源。那么对于有一些家长来说，可能都我们都会遇到一些不可预测的事情啊的情况，学这个家庭呢是需要帮助的。
，那么我们学校呢是可以提供这个经济的援助，以及有一有一个折扣的，那么啊、呃、给到我们有需要的家庭。好，那这是我们第二个问题。好，接下来我们交给 Jennifer， 我们进行第三个问题。谢谢。Thank you very much. Thank you, Vivian. Dr. Hui, moving on to our very last question. Um, after-school programs are very popular amongst children and families because it allows children to play. As you mentioned, play is very important. Uh, boost their communication skills, develop physically, mentally, and also lear learn to communicate work in teams. Um, can you share with us the extracurricular program at CAPCL in the fields of music, STEM, or STEAM, actually, arts and sports? Thank you. Wow. I am so happy to tell you our children have a lot of options. So starting this year in September, they already signed up for different ECA activity for season one and season two. For music, we have ukulele and we have um, violin. And for STEM, we have robotic and some Lego uh, brings a mindstorm project for them to do. In art, they have explored different ways to create art. We call it the art explorer. We also have drama activity that children learn to be a little actor on the stage, uh, sport. Um, they have taekwondo, they have gymnastic, table tennis, badminton, basketball, football, dance, and um, hip hop dance as well. So, the options are many, and usually our children sign up for more than one ECA activity, and um, it runs every day after school from Tuesday to Thursday. Um, so it allow lots of options every day. The different things going on, and parents can choose and then pay uh, for this ECA activity because we believe. Children will become more creative when they find their talent, and usually through this activity, they also get to learn their other friends in the school that enjoy the same interests and that build the community, that build the confidence, that really help them to enjoy learning because play is so important. And ECA options are numerous at CAPCL. Definitely. Great, great uh, presentation today. Yes, community and definitely communication. That's so important into our future. Um, so I'd like to invite Vivian to translate. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, 感谢我们的许博士. 我们刚刚进行的第三个提问, 提问是课后活动呢, 是很受孩子的欢迎和家庭的欢迎的, 那么因为它可以让孩子去玩, 提高他们的沟通技巧, 发展身心, 学习, 团队合作, 那么请与我们分享一下刘平斋在音乐, STEAM, 艺术和体育领域的一些这个课外活动那么我们这个课外活动非常非常的丰富啊然后呢在刘平斋提供多种的课外活动的选择有不同的选择那么在今年的话呢我们有以下的这些活动首先在音乐方面呢就有这个尤
um, immigration company. And Vivian, please do the introduction. Thank you. 嗯 ，OK， 好的。那么接下来呢，我们讲座的最后一个部分呢，是根据因为根据以往的这个经验，有不小不少的家长非常关心来香港来香港读书是怎样解决这个签证问题呢？那么今天我们请来了移民资讯机构保德信移民专家，今天呢会有我们的 Eddie 是吧 ？Eddie 来介绍一下。是是，大家好，大家下午好。那呃，也相信大家在规划给子女。在香港接受这么好的教育的同时呢，也会想到，呃，如何在香港，呃，居住啦，然后获得香港的一个身份。那保德信移民专家作为香港这个本土的一家企业，然后也是专门为内地的人士来香港提供了非常专业的服务。那我今天就借此机会呢，呃，进行一个保德信公司背景的介绍。然后同时也会介绍一下移居香港的四种方式。OK， 请下一页。OK， 那首先看什么公司的背景呢？那我们公司是由两位老板，也就是冯月芝先生还有陈佳丽女士，在二零一一年所创办的。那两位老板在呃，其实服务内地的人士，包括移居香港啦、财务规划啦、教育跟地产方面，已经有将近三十年的经验了。那我们再看到呃右手边，我们可以到下一张有放大的图片了。对我们看到右手边的话，呃，我们说其实移民公司有非常多，然后也有不少移民公司说自己是会办理这个香港移居的，或者号称会办理香港移居了。但我们公司的话，就是保德信跟其他公司在香港移居这一块呢，是有一个非常大的区别的，也就是我们核心的竞争力是有前三位的入境处的主任和高官，呃，加盟到我们保德信集团作为同事。来一起对有意向移居香港的人士的背景啦，进行相关的审核，然后呃制定相关的申请方案，并保证这个文案的提交是符合要求的，从而也保证了我们呃客户申请的一个成功率。所以说，呃，在这一块的话，香港移居我们是非常的有专业性的。OK， 然后下一页我们可以看到我们保德信呃的专业性，还有尽职尽责的态度，也获得了业内的。呃，不少的认可啦、啊，包括最近五年的呃相关的一些奖项，例如，例如在二零一零呃二零一九年的金领航的企业大奖啦、啊，这是我们和生产呃香港生产力促进局合办的一个非常有重量的一个奖项。那今年的话，呃，我们的呃老板也是 Christina 女士，陈女士，她也是获得了二零二二年的杰出三届的女领袖奖。OK。然后也正是呃，下一页我们会可以看到，那请下一页吧。嗯，然后下一页我们也会看到，呃，我们的专业性，包括有前入境处的主任的加盟，保证了我们在申请的这个时候呢，可以呃为客户直接来制定相关的申请方案。所以，我们跟其他的移民公司所不同的一个方面，就我们是作为呃香港移居的项目方。来呃接收相关人士的申请的 ，OK， 我们可以直接跟香港的雇主接洽啦，我们可以撰写计划书啦，并且我们可以跟政府部门，比如说入境处的相关主任，直接来磋商来解决问题了。所以保德信是作为香港移居方面是作为最终端的处理人，在呃服务客户的。当然也有不少的内地移民公司呢，他们也会跟我们保德信进行合作的。那内地移民公司更多的是处在一个代理的。这个范围啦，他们也会进行客户的接触，然后提供一般的查询之后，呃，就会转接到保德信来做最后的来处理。呃，然后下一页的话，嗯，我们再看一下我们的办公环境吧。有可能之前应该在这个会议室里面，大多数人因为疫情的原因也很长时间没有来香港。那、呃、终于香港是通关了，也希望。嗯，各位来香港多看看啦、啊，如果有机会也来保德信来看一下我们的办公环境。那我们是在呃这个豫港大厦，也就是湾仔谢飞道的豫港大厦的二十楼，一整层都是我们办公室。然后我们的地理位置，呃，需要特别强调的是，我们的这个地理位置是距离入境处只要五分钟的步行时间的，所以相比其他的移民公司，特别是内地的移民公司，有可能内地的移民公司只能。通过在线递交申请啦、啊，或者是出了问题了，需要电话啦、啊，或者邮件沟通的时候呢，嗯
我们在申请的整个过程，我们都是可以到路径处跟相关的主任直接进行沟通的。那这样的话，我们解决问题的能力的这个定向性就更强，同时也提高了这个解决问题的效率。OK， 然后这就我们公司的一个背景，就基本的介绍了。嗯，下一页的话呢，我想看一下，嗯，请到下一页了。OK， 到下一页的话，我们就。呃，说到香港，就是说内地人士来香港的话，会用几种主要的方式。当然，香港移居香港的方式不仅限于这四种了，还有一些什么科技人才啦，或者一般就业政策之类的。呃，内地人士主要是用这四种方式，也就是优秀人才路径计划，我们简称优才，还有输入内地人才计划，简称专才，还有高端人才通行证计划，也就是简称高才通。那最后一个是非本地毕业生的留港计划，呃，取英文大写字母开头就是 I A N G， OK， 我们可以比较通俗的把它记成三才 E I N G 的方式， OK。那接下来呢，我再详细介绍这四种方式的一个申请的方法，或者说这四种方式的一个主要区别了，请下一页。嗯，那首先看到的话呢，就是优秀人才的入境计划，我们。简称它优才。那请大家记住呢，这个优才计划，香港优秀人才路径计划，它是一个计分制，也就是是呃，它是根据这项计划是根据申请人的年龄啦、啊、教育背景啦、啊、工作背景啦、啊、专业技能背景，包括家庭背景，比如说呃，配偶是否是学士以上学位啦、啊，有几位以十八岁以下的子女啦、啊，综合来进行一个计分的。OK。那综合计分制的话呢，它满分是245分。那如果有达到80分，<咳>就可以递交一个申请了。当然， 80分我们说它只是一个及格的分数线，可以递交申请。但是说真的，竞争不是太激，呃，竞争力不是很强。因为最近一两年的话，确实蛮多很多内地优秀的人士呢，都通过了优才方式来递交申请，他们的评估的分数。呃，可以达到100甚至是超过160分都有，因为综合计分制的话呢，它的特点就决定了申请人在年龄啦、啊，还有教育啦、啊，关于还有相关的一些专业技能方面的要求是非常的严格的。比如说，如果是北大的名校毕业，那是有加分的；那如果是处于这个香港的人才清单的范围内的工作技能，也就是他的工作技能是香港的政府、香港地区比较缺少的一个技能的话。也是可以获得加分，呃，加分的。那这项计划的话呢，它申请起来其实，呃，也不说难，因为只要自己背景够强大的话，他只要分数达到了，嗯，那递交这个申请就有竞争力。那有些人士是这样的，比如说他其实有蛮长的工作经验啊，十几二十年的工作经验啊，然后其实也有学士以上的学位啊，但只只不过不是名校毕业的，呃，并不是名校毕业的。那如果通过这个优才计划来申请的话呢，就有可能在分数上呢，有点不占优势。举个例子，有可能十几二十年的工作经验，在工作技能这方面是很 OK 的，但是在年龄方面的话，只要超过四十岁，其实如果申请优才计划的话，呃，年龄就会被扣分了。那这样的话，我们就可以看到，如果优才香港优秀人才计划并不适合的话呢，我们也可以选择输入内地人才计划。那请到下一页。呃、o、okay, k 好，我们看到输入内地人才计划，也就是我们俗称的香港的专才，他对申请人的话呢，其实就并没有年龄的上限要求啦，同时也不要求申请人是是呃百大啊或者属于人才清单方面的。OK， 只要申请人呢是有学士的学位。并且有良好的工作经验，就符合了，就个人其实就已经符合了这个要求的申请。但是呢，这个申请在递交的时候呢，它是要由香港本地的公司来进行雇佣的，也就是香港本地公司要进行一个担保。那我们保德信作为一个在香港本土的公司呢，就可以根据申请人的背景来慢慢匹配到合适的公司，来通通过公司担保的方式呢，来递交这个香港专才的申请。这也是我们保德信的一大优势之一了。通过我们公司来匹配到的，呃，香港本地的雇主，然后再来担保这位申请人来进行这个专才的申请，通过率是非常之高的。嗯
。然后除了这两个计划之外呢，我们可以再晚到再晚下一页了 ，OK？ 也就是香港政府呢，也就是在今年推出了这个高端人才通行证的计划。这个计划主要分为三类 ，OK？ 呃，我们可以把它。很简单的给理解成是有两个财的，一个是财富的财，另外一个是才华的才。财富的财呢，就是第一类啊。如果说过去一年，这个这位的申请人，这位人士，他的年薪呢是有超过二百五十万的港币，呃，约等于相约等于人民币二百二十五万了，他就可以通过证明他的高收入来获得这个香港获得这个高端人才通行证的资格。因为有的时候确实高高收入是，收入也是一种能力的一种体现。OK， 这是第一种。那第二种的话就是，呃，看他的学士的学位。这边请注意，只只能是学士学位。OK， 学士学位的话，如果是毕业于全球的头大，呃，头百大，然后过去有五年，过去的五年有三年的工作经验的话，那就符合第二类的要求了。那也有一些人是有可能是属于百大的毕业，但是刚毕业不久啊，还没有这么多的工作经验啊，那就属于第三类。其实第三类是最简单或者说申请最直接的一种方式，也是香港政府现在为了接收更多的呃有才华的人士来香港，把这个政策真的很偏向于这种百大毕业的学生，只要是属于过去五年内毕业的百大百大的学士生呢，都可以直接来递交这个高端人才通行证的申请了。而且可以在非常短的时间内获得两年有效的香港签注，那这样就可以来香港自由的工作了。OK， 所以在申请的过程中，第三类其实蛮多人士都是真的可以自己 DIY 就可以做了，因为确实只要您确定你的毕业证书是全球百大的，然后是在五年内毕业的，身份证上的呃信息也是符合你的毕业证书的信息的，同时的这个学士的学位也可以做出认证的话。就可以直接来递交申请了。那如果第二类的话呢，他还是要去解释过去五年当中的三年的工作经验。第一类的话呢，主要是在税这方面如何来解释清楚，你的收入是达到了这个二百五十万港币，或者约等于两百二十五万港币，这个收入呢是要有税单进行一个匹配的。那第一类跟第二类的申请的话呢，保德信已经开始有成功的案例了，所以的话。我们也希望有这相关背景的人士可以找到我们来进行一个申请。那这边也可以，呃，再强调一下，关于百大的头百大的大学的话呢，目前我们中国内地的大学是有，呃，北大啦、清华啦、复旦啦、浙江啦、上海交大啦，还有中科大、华中科技大学、中山大学和南京大学这几所。所以，如果是毕业于这几所大学的呃人士，可以留意一下，有可能你已经是符合。通过高端人才通行证直接来香港的一个计划了，嗯，那如果说前三类都不适合，就我们刚刚已经介绍了优才、专才和高才通的这个计划，如果都不适合的话呢，来香港读书，也就是来香港获得一个学士或者硕士以上的学位的话，也是可以通过这个非本地毕业生的留港工作获得香港的签注的。OK， 我们可以看到下一页，嗯。我们可以看到呢，这边的话，呃 ，ING 其实就说起来，它就非常的，嗯，非常可以说非常的简单，只要是在香港有学士或者硕士以上的毕业，就可以在毕业的时候就可以在拿到这个毕业证书的时候就可以申请这个非本地毕业生的留港工作签证了。那这个签证呢，只要你能顺利毕业，就是可以给到两年。那在两年的过程当中，也是可以在香港随意的找工作的。然后在呃续签的时候呢，也是需要有一个雇主的担保。然后到第七年就可以申请转永居了。嗯，提到这个第七年转永居的话，是香港所有的计划，也就是刚刚说到的优才啦、专才啦、高才通，包括现在所说的 ING， 都是要在香港居住啦，包括在工作啦，七年之后再转为一个永居的身份的。那当中需要满足什么条件呢？或者说在香港工作，包括居住，需要注意哪些细节呢？我们保德信也会帮忙客户在这七年当中做一个很好的规划，并且提出相关的一些建议的。所以希望在会后呢，如果有兴趣的人士可以进一步来了解相关一些细节的问题了。
那今天其实因为时间所限，我就先不多说。因为如果每项计划我们在进行客户的咨询，有可能都是光光一个单项拿出来就要讲个一个小时，甚至超过一个小时。今天做一个最基本的介绍。OK， 谢谢大家。对，我们是嗯 ，OK， 好的。OK， 非常感谢 Eddie。哇，我觉得你的这个介绍非常非常的清晰，也多了一个啊，也多了一个我们这个高端人才这这个计划啊，听起来是很兴奋、嗯、啊。其中的百百大啊，我也是其中一个的。啊，恭喜恭喜！对啊，然后呢，非常呃，还有也有成功的案例，对吧？啊，对于你们来说，对，其实如果是用高才通申请的第二类、第三大，也就是百大毕业的话，一般。两到三天了，快的话两到三天就能批准的，非常非常的高效。那我相信在座的家长也非常有信心啊，与我们的保德信移民专家合作啊，那肯定是很快可以拿到我们香港的身份证的。好，那么谢谢啊，非常开心啊。Eddie 的一个介绍，那今天也非常感谢我两我们两个学校校长的分享和宝贵的资讯啊。同时的话呢，也感谢伊比斯呃体验伊比斯和 w i s p e r 的精心安排。那么线上的家长，如果对于今天的两个学学校的有任何的疑问的话呢，可以联系我们在 PPT 上面的这个电话、邮箱以及扫描我们的二维码，都可以联系到我们深圳或者是香港的同事的。那么我们将会解答你们的任何问题。那么今天我们的讲座到此快要结束了哈，那感谢大家的参与。最后的话，也想 Jennifer 来补充一下。Thank you, everyone, for attending today, and I wish everyone a wonderful and fantastic weekend.、Uh, if you have any questions, please do give us a call. Phone number is on the slide right now, or feel free to email us.、Uh, we will also send out copies of the presentation slide and also the recording for today for some of those or some of you who might have missed it or had to leave early. So please do reach out if you have questions or if you would like to schedule a school visit. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you. 好，谢谢大家。